Okay, hello and welcome to Branch Players Crash Bandicoot. This game originally came out in 1996 on the original PlayStation, and I'm just going to leave the title screen on for a few seconds before it goes into the story cutscene. The one that kind of, like, sets up the game, basically, because it doesn't play when you click start or before the, or before the title screen. I don't know why. So I'll be right back and into the gameplay after that. But Dr. Cortex, we have not determined the cause of past failures. More. <laughs> This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex commandos to world domination. This time I shall reign triumphant. We are closer than ever before. Quickly, into the vortex! Attack the Cortex. The vortex is not ready. We have no idea what it could do. <laughs> Failure again. Capture him! Uh-oh. Okay, so basically, if I'm understanding the story of this correctly, Cortex pretty much wants to use his invention, the Cortex Vortex, to create an army of hyper-intelligent animals to help him take over the world. Or at least that's how I'm understanding it, and by- and, well, judging from what he said, he wanted Crash to be his general, which, uh, honestly, what we know- given what we know of the character in the future, Honestly, it's kind of impressive how a man who, well, it's kind of impressive how a man with a head that big can apparently be that stupid. So, basically, in this game, we can just jump and we can spin. These boxes, well, we have to bounce on them ten times before they break. The question mark blocks, sorry, the question mark crates will have either a life in them, a ton of wumper fruit in them, or, uh, whatchamacallit. A life, a ton of wumper fruit, or a bonus stage token. That's what it was. And, well, we won't see bonus stages until the next level. Obviously, the, well, the bounce crates will, well, they'll bounce you directly up. I don't think there's ones that go other ways in this game. And there's also ones that give you lives. Basically, there's one, there are crash boxes, which, you know, give you lives, and Aku Aku boxes, which will give you an Aku Aku mask. So, basically, uh, if you have one Aku Aku, it will take the hit for you, two will take two hits for you, and if you get three, you get invincibility for, I think it's like 30 seconds, and you will also just, like, kill enemies and boxes will explode on contact. So, uh, hopefully we can get through this without too much hassle. Now, up here, we have a thing that I've seen a lot of people say is way too hard for the first level of a game. And, yeah, I did mess that up, not gonna lie. So let's hopefully not up next. Uh, and... Done. Okay, fantastic. That was nowhere near as clean as it should have been. If I'd timed that a little bit better, I would have been able to just cleanly run through all of them. But no, I messed it up. Also, if we get 100 Wumper Fruit, as you do in platformers typically, well... Uh, you know, Wumper Fruit are the thing you collect and you get 100, you get a bonus life. Honestly, also, if we hit every box in a level, we will get a gem. I'm going to try to get every gem, but I know that there's some levels, and by that I mean a lot of the early levels I'll have to come back to, because there's regular gems and then there's color gems, and basically you need the color gems to get through, to get to certain areas in some levels. However... At the same time, getting the color gems can be absolutely painful, because this game is pretty hard to begin with. And basically, in order to get the color gems, you need to beat certain levels and get all the boxes without dying. So, uh, I'm going to try my best, but, uh, no promises. Like, if you're expecting to see an absolute masterclass on how to play Crash Bandicoot, yeah, this isn't going to be the this is not of a series for that. But, you know, I will uh, happily take... Basically, I'm just going to try to keep the... I'm going to try to keep these masks just as long as I can, to be totally honest. Because, realistically, well, if I can, uh, you know, not lose, lose them, if I'm just... Uh, also, if I... Also, if I may be invincible currently, but if I fall into a pit, I still just die. Uh, similarly, on a... Similarly, in some... In later stages, if I just fall into the water, I just die. Because Crash can't swim, I need the green gem in order to be able to get the final few boxes on this stage. So once I get the green gem, I will have to come back, unfortunately. Also, I just uh, decided to do the spin there at the end, because I was a bit worried. Now, also, this is where we get into TNT crates. 
They will now both explode. Fantastic. I can just leave those to their own devices. And this one, I just noticed, doesn't have a box count there. Because in Crash 2 and 3, it will tell you how many boxes there are on a stage. And now that we have the free Torna tokens, we get to go to the first bonus stage of the game. So these bonus stages, I don't think you have to do them. I don't think they count for all the progression stuff. However, uh, you can get a whole bunch of bonus lives from them sometimes, so it is quite nice to have them. Also, for some reason, I don't know why they did this, but in this game, you can only save after you either A, beat the bonus stage, or B, get a gem. I don't know why it's like that, but hopefully we can, uh, you know, get through without too much hassle. Unfortunately, because I'm playing this on uh, an emulator, I do own the physical game of this, and I also own the Insane Trilogy. I have played through the Insane Trilogy twice, as actually. But yeah, basically, having access to save states right now is actually going to be very helpful for me, because I'll be totally honest, there are some stages that I'm just not going to be able to do. And we got hit. Okay, you know what? We got hit, but it could be worse. We don't get the gem. We missed three boxes, I think, because we need the green gem, and we don't get access to the green gem until, like, halfway through the second island or something. Okay, up to level three, which is the Great Gate. So this is the first of the kind of vertical climb stages. There are a few different versions of these that we'll see throughout the game, and that kind of just change visually as we go. So we'll have two or three levels like this on this first... Actually, I think there's a... I know there's a couple on this first island. I think there might be another one on the second. And... Fantastic, we managed to get that, that Aku Aku mask just in time. So basically, these are kind of more traditional 2D style levels. Also, if we yeah, get hit by that box, obviously, we do just take a whole bunch of damage. And by a whole bunch of damage, I mean we'd uh, lose a life. And by that, I mean we'd lose a mask because we uh, have... Okay, fantastic, because we have Aku Aku. Also, in 2... I think it's in 2. I think 2 is when we get access to whatchamacallit, uh, the slide. And I'll be honest, Crash's slide is so helpful. Like, it's so fast in it, and when you jump off it, you basically get a whole bunch of, uh, like you get a whole bunch of airtime and everything from it. Now we have the free, so now we can just, uh, hopefully breeze through here. Grab that Torna token, just breeze through that guy, run over here, jump down here. I will say, this isn't specifically a Crash thing, but I, I think I've mostly noticed it with Crash, probably because I played a whole bunch of Crash when I was a kid. Fun fact, despite playing a whole bunch of Crash as a kid, I never finished this game. Like, I never finished this game until the Ensign Trilogy came out. I, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever actually finished 2 or 3 when I was a kid either. Which is kind of weird, because I basically played a borderline religious amount of Crash Team Racing. I still adore that game. And its remake is fantastic. And honestly, if I can, if I can say one thing about a CTR remake, it, that is, uh, it's basically just like, hey, I really hope that every other, like, kart racer that comes out now kind of just takes a leaf out of its book and just has as good uh, post-launch support. Like, I think I mentioned this in a previous video at one point, but I would love to see a new Sonic and Sega All-Stars as racing, but, like, with that level of post-launch support. Because let's be real, Sega has Sega has so, so many plur, uh, properties and everything. They, they can make so many characters and tracks. Okay, so basically, obviously, we don't want to get hit by these spike columns, and that is the end of the Great Gate, because we need to come back here once we have the Yellow Jam. And honestly, I'm kind of flying through this. This is going alarmingly smoothly. Okay, we missed eight boxes, apparently. So, uh, I guess there's eight boxes on that Yellow Jam perf. So, what are we doing next? Up next is... Boulders. Okay, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. And at this level, we are going to be running away from some boulders, as you can tell by the new perspective. You know, perspective change, because now we are running towards the camera, because we are running away from that boulder. And, well, there's also uh, a couple of other, su other subsequent boulders, but for now, this is the boulder we're dealing with. Boulder number one wasn't much of a hassle. I think we... I, I, 
No, I think you do run away from a boulder again in two. But in two, there's also uh, a couple of other things you be that you'll be running away from. So basically, as we go through this level, it will just get gradually a bit more complex. So pretty much, you know, it's added in a couple of boxes, some more pits, some fences, and I died. Yeah, uh, Aku Aku does not help you when you just get crushed by a boulder. And I could have sworn I hit a checkpoint. I could have sworn I hit a checkpoint in the previous area. Oh well, whatever. It's not like we lost all that much progress. And honestly, we have 20 lives left. We have 20 spare lives already. To be honest, at some point during this game, I'm hoping that I can hit 99. I probably won't, but uh, I'm, I'm going to hope that I can hit 99. Okay. Huh, I guess there wasn't a checkpoint there. I guess I just mentally assumed there was. Because I assumed that it would just be like, after each one, I'd get a checkpoint. Guess not. Okay. Either way, we can hopefully get through this without too much hassle. Because now... Okay, there we go. Now we'll get a checkpoint. There we go. Honestly, I don't even know how I managed to mess up that first one, that first time too badly. So now we have to do a bit more slightly more complicated platforming. It's still not exactly difficult, but, you know. I mean, I say that. I still died last time, so, uh, hopefully we can, uh, get through without too much hassle. And remember, and just, uh, I'm mean, not too bothered if I lose a few Wumpa fruit as long as I hit the boxes. Because, obviously, I need the boxes to get through here. And I think I need the pink gem in the stage? No? I guess it must be in the next one. Okay. Not in the next stage, in the next, uh, one of these stages. Because, basically, in this game, there's a few different kind of level types, I suppose. And we'll have to deal with a good few of those multiple times. So, uh, so far, this is looking really good. Honestly, I'm kind of flying through this. Obviously, I'm not going at speedrun speeds. Like, like, I don't know what speedrun speed is for this game. But I imagine it's a bit faster than this. But I am, but honestly, I am uh, pretty com uh, pretty comfortable with how fast I'm going so far. Now, okay, that's the first token. I do need to be a bit careful about that fish. I, okay, yeah, that was me just being a bit overzealous on the jump, not gonna lie. I don't really have an excuse for that one. I was just a bit overzealous on it. So I just need to wait for the leaf, for the, I guess that's a lily pad, not a leaf. I, either way, I just need to wait for that to come back. And I do need to be a bit careful with those, because they... Because basically, they have a bit of a weird thing. Like, basically, if you aren't, like, directly in the middle, you can sometimes just slip off them, as far as I can tell. Okay, turn, turn. I'm honestly I'm kind of surprised I managed to hit that fish. And we got a nice checkpoint. I mean, realistically, any checkpoint is nice, because, uh, I'll be honest, I will need them. In this game, I will definitely need them. Okay, so, here we have the green plants. Basically, we uh, jump on them, and then a few sec- then, like, a couple of seconds later, they, like, kind of snap short. However, later in, uh, I don't know if it's in this level or in the next of this type of level, we will also encounter the blue ones. They're on more of a timer, and we'll just- oh, there we go. Like, they will just go on their own, and, and they- I jumped into a fish that I didn't see, and they uh, uh, saved it, saved it, saved it, saved it, saved it. That was almost like five levels of catastrophe in like three seconds. Okay, so basically, let's hopefully get through this without too much hassle now. I say about it, no. Also, I, I'll be honest, at some point in this game, I will just like jump onto a platform, spin, and just slide right off. Like, I know it will happen, and I will get frustrated when it when it inevitably does, so I'm just gonna mention it in advance. Also, uh, these plants do not care that you have Aku Aku. Also, we need the orange gem for this stage. So once again, we will be coming back at a later time. Okay, one, and two, and break that, and that should be the bonus stage. Fantastic. Okay. So, let's see here. Okay, this should be a pretty simple one. I don't think you need to do the bonus stages, but you know what? I'm gonna do them anyway. Because, you know, it's always nice to just get free lives and free Wumpa fruits and stuff. Okay, that needs to be... 
one, two, three, four, done. Fantastic. And we get a couple more bonus lives. So we are now up to 24 and 13% completion already. I will save my game because I don't, because I can't have a gem in this level. And I don't think I can in the next couple either. But we'll see how it goes. So we are, well, we're going to keep going upstream. And let's just jump onto there. I, I nearly messed that up immediately. I mean, if nothing else, it would have been on brand. It would have been annoying, but it would have been on brand. And there is another orange gem path that we need. So we will be coming back here again at a later time. And now we... Uh, what do we do next? Okay, I guess we have the first boss fight now. So now we have to fight Papu Papu. Who is... I assume he's, like, the leader of the, like, people of this island. And, uh, pretty much, well, we have two masks here, and as far as I'm aware, I just need to, uh, jump in- I just need to, like, jump and hit him in the back of the head. I say that, but, uh, I- I'll be honest, I took two hits and I don't know how. But either way, we should be okay. I jumped directly into him. I jumped into- I basically, like, jumped into his face as opposed to the back of his head. So basically, you can just stand on his little chair and just wait for him to swing at you. So yeah, this boss fight is really easy and I don't know how I managed to actually die the first time. But I will say, this is- like, it's a good kind of entry level boss. Also, uh, be careful when you kill him, because he can fall on you, I think. I'm pretty sure he can fall on you. And uh, obviously that will do damage and or just outright kill you, depending on how you're doing. Okay, so, now uh, into the Rolling Stones. Ten. Did we have an Aku Aku mask? I don't think I did. Okay. Also, I will say that is one of my favorite sounds in this game. When you just destroy multiple boxes- at, When you destroy multiple boxes at once, I love that sound. It's such a satisfying sound. Okay, let's just get through this level. So yeah, this game came out in 1996, which honestly... Oh, also, uh, this is where we get first Brio stage. Uh, note, Dr. Brio, Dr. Nitrous Brio, was the other uh, scientist who was there with Cortex, who was the one saying, hey, we don't know how this works. Like, maybe we shouldn't do this science thing. Okay, now I need to be a bit careful here. Fantastic, we got the bonus life. We got the Brio token. Okay, let's get out of here. Because anything that was left there is now gone. Fortunately, I think it was just Wumper Fruits. So, uh, hopefully we didn't miss a Torna or Brio token. I know that we got a Brio one, so I imagine there wouldn't have been two in the same place. But let's just, uh, hopefully not need to worry about it. Okay, nice, clean, simple. I will say, I do love just being able to get an unbroken run of platforming sometimes. And oh I need... Okay, I can do this if you need anything. Fantastic. Okay. That. Okay, you know what? I nearly completely messed that up, but I will... But because of the invincibility, I survived. Okay, so. Another bonus stage. Also, I should probably note, despite the fact that these bonus stages are very clearly, like, on a 2D field, like, they're, they're basically 2D levels, but they're still, like, in a 3D space, so I can just, like, walk off them, I think, which, uh, obviously isn't something I want to do, but it can happen, and now I need the blue gem. If I have the blue gem, I can actually descend down that path, because this one, this kind of, uh, little totem column thing it'll basically i'll jump on it and then it falls down a couple of seconds later if i have the blue gem i can go down there safely however because i don't have the blue gem and i won't get access to it until like pretty close to the end of the game actually like i don't get access to that until way later in the game i think it's actually i think it's actually like a few levels from the end when i, I get access to that fantastic we did the video stage first try I say first try, like I would get another try at it. And we got a whole bunch of bonus lives. 
Also, I don't know if he can kill you with that explosion, and honestly, I don't really want to find out. Also, uh, because it wasn't a Torna bonus stage, we don't get uh, to save after that. However, we are now up to 33 lives, and we can't get the gem on this stage once again, because, well, there was, well, there is that blue gem path that we couldn't go down. Also, there is a third type of bonus stages, for, which are Cortex bonus stages. They are really hard, and they will basically give you two keys. There's only two in the entire game, and they will give you keys, and basically those keys give you two secret levels. So, uh, they are very easy to miss. Okay, I'll be honest, this is... So this level is called Hog Wild, and I'll be honest, I do not have much confidence in my ability to do this first try, but we'll see how it goes. Because I remember doing this in the Insane Trilogy and struggling with it quite a bit. But, uh, let's just see how it goes. I know the... Fortunately, these levels, like, there's a couple of these, I'm pretty sure they are really short. Also, I'm pretty sure that in the Insane Trilogy, the timing on some of these jumps is a lot harder. Because I'm pretty... Because I distinctly remember in the Insane Trilogy, I hit the... I hit the drum thing multiple times. Okay. This is going really smoothly. I think I'm near the end here. I'm probably like, I don't know, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through. And, uh, okay. Go right. Go right. Jump. And I hang right here, and that's the end of the level. Fantastic. We just destroyed Hogwild. Fantastic. I love it when I get a perfect run through a stage. Okay, so that should be, what, 13, 14%. Nice. Okay. So with that, I am actually going to save the game and probably end off today's episode. Actually, wait, what's the next level? Depending on what the next level is, I might do another one. Uh, what do we have next? Native Fortress. You know what? I think this is the last level on the first island, so yeah, I will do this in this episode. So this is, well, just like with the Great Gate, this is... Well, it's basically the same kind of thing, although it's a, you know, it's a little bit harder because, you know, we're a bit further through the game. So hopefully I can get through this without too much hassle, but I'll be honest, I have pretty low faith in my ability to get through this without much hassle, so uh, we'll just see how it goes. But honestly, so far, this, and to be totally honest, this first episode has gone, like, surprisingly smoothly. To be totally honest, I do remember playing the Ancient in Trilogy version of this, because that's the only version of it I've ever actually beaten, and I remember that was really hard. That I remember just slipping off things a lot. Also, I, I will say, I do really like that kind of spinning sound. Also, apologies if you just heard me hiccup, but uh, yeah, that'll happen. Okay. So let's, you know, try to get all these Wumper through. Because, uh, well, we got another bonus life. So that is up to 36. I know that at in one stage, like right before the end, if you have the blue gem, I think, it basically gives you a secret path and it just takes you... It basically just takes you up, gives you like 30 bonus lives, and then just drops you off at the end for level. And that is exactly what I didn't want to do. I messed that up. I don't get that bonus life now, but hey, I managed to get a checkpoint without taking a hit. Fantastic. Okay, let's just wait out the flame here, because I know it's coming. There it is. So let's just jump over here, and hope... I think we're about halfway through this stage now. I, yeah, that was bad. But I did save it, so could have been worse, and now we are up to 38 lives. So I'm just going to wait for the spike column to go again, and now just hop across. I want to dodge the monkeys, because I know they can kind of just send you flying off into the abyss. Like, I think if, if you spin them at the wrong time, they can send you flying, which uh, obviously isn't ideal. Okay, so now we have another bonus stage. And... Okay, that is 39 lives. So, I will call that... Huh. That was a that was a very short bonus level. Okay. Like, that was a suspiciously short bonus level, and we are 21% of the way done with the game already. Fantastic. I mean I say that, 
Like, I say that as if it's like, oh, that's 25% of my, like, total time it'll take to 100% it. No, 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 no. Some levels will take me... Uh, like, some episodes I will definitely have to cut because... Well, some episodes uh, I will definitely have to cut down and from, uh, from the initial recording because I know some levels will take me hours to do. And by that, I mean, for one of the gems, it requires beating one of the hardest levels in the game without dying and getting all of the boxes. So, uh, yeah, that one is probably not going to be happening. And by that, I mean, it's it will happen. It'll just uh, take me a good while to do it. Also, I should probably note, if I was playing the Insane Trilogy, I would do Stormy Ascent. However, I... Well, I'm obviously doing the PS1 version, so I won't be doing Stormy Ascent in this playthrough. At some point... Like, although I do I do kind of want to... Want to... Like, if I... Is there a way I could play a Stormy Ascent? I'll... I don't know, but I'll look into it. Okay, so let's just dodge that. Another checkpoint. Fantastic. Get through the monkey. Dodge the spike columns. Over the flames. Fantastic. That was about as perfect as that could have possibly gone for me. So that is 41 lives now. I need the red gem for this stage, so I will have to come back. Okay, let's just wait out the flame once again. And, and I jumped too early. That uh, isn't great, but you know what? It happens. Me making a platforming error. Nah, couldn't be. And by that I mean... Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it begins. The, the standard, it was going so well that I messed it up once, and now I will just die like 30 times. No. Disclaimer, I will not die 30 times. Maybe two or three, but definitely not 30. But yeah, I will have to come back to this stage later. I will... Like, I will pro I'll still, like, probably include, like, the entire process. Because, uh, you know, need to need to do the whole thing. Okay, so now let's just jump over here into the background once again. And, and now we just hop across, just in time. And now we do the final ascent of this stage. Because, now nah. Also, I will say, when you fall down, it's an all... When you fall all the way down, it is very frustrating. When you hit all of these on the way down, I love that sound so much. Also, I'm not going to get all of the Wumpa fruit here. I probably should, just for convenience purposes. But, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to get to the end. And for mostly time convenience, and also because I don't want to have to do this little bit, like, eight times. Because I know me, I do not trust myself to not mess up the platforming. Because, uh... Well, I may be playing a platformer, but I'm definitely not great at the whole platforming thing. That is 46 lives. 46 lives done, and that is the first island clear. Obviously, we'll have to come back to most of the levels, because we don't have the uh, requisite gems for them. But next time, but I'm going to end off today's episode here, and next time we can start the second island. And actually, we do this level, and I think we have another boss. So, I'm going to end off today's episode here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, feel free to leave a comment and click any buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I will hopefully see you all tomorrow for the second episode of French Players Crash Bandicoot. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.